Hi guys, it's Matt from Maxon UK here and in this sort of set of tutorials I'm going to be looking at how to create simple houses. Now one of the things we get asked quite a lot is hey, you know, how do you model a house? So over the next few videos I'm going to be looking at how I would you know, sort of model something from scratch really when it comes to a variety of different houses. So um, I'm going to start with a, a simple bungalow basically uh, and the easiest thing to do really is to um, start with a cube. So let's just have a look at its dimensions. So 200 centimeters, so it's only a two meters wide, which is probably not going to be very wide at all. So if we say, you know, something simple, say by 400 centimeters wide, um, so four meters deep. So it's, you know, gonna be a very, very simple, small bungalow to, to start with at the moment. And it's um, two meters high, so let's make it three meters high. Um, there we go, and that gives us a little bit of maneuvering room. Um, this is what's gonna allow us to sort of start. Um, and yeah, basically I'll start with a cube. I might give myself some extra segments just to kind of, you know, give me some polygons to work with. So if I just change my garage shading, there we go, and it allows me to, you know, move some stuff. So, oh, I wanna go up with there. I'm thinking ahead, so I'm going to have windows and stuff on my um, bungalow. I might just lower the height of that actually to say 250 centimeters. Um, again, I'm not doing this from any measurements, I'm not doing this from any drawings, I'm just going to sort of reel off, as it were, what's in my head when it comes to doing this sort of thing. So, but I am going to think ahead, so we're going to have windows and we're going to have doors, so I want some polygons, some lines, points where I'm going to have the top of the windows and I want some stuff where I'm going to have the bottom of the windows as well and maybe some you know sort of sides when it comes to where I want windows and where I want doors and those sorts of things. Um, yeah so it's down to you really. Uh, so there we go I've got a cube I've segmented it in a couple of ways and then I'm going to make it editable. Okay, and that means that I now can move some of its points and polygons and edges and stuff to give me a bit more of shape where I want things to go. So let's give ourselves a roof. So I'm going to select the middle points and move that up. Okay, and that allows me to quickly get myself some form of, you know, pitched roof there. Um, this line here, I want to be the top of the windows and doors so that it's very similar all the way across. So that's a little bit too low for me. So using a shortcut, which is to press, not press and hold, just press U and then L, which uh, hopefully you can see is the loop select. And I can select that polygon, um, that loop of edges and move that up. Okay, and that's quite simple. So that's gonna be to the top of some windows for me. And I'm going to do the same there, and I'm just going to move that up as well, so it can be the bottom of some windows, which is fine. So this is going to be quite a small um, windows, quite a small house. So if I just select that polygon, you can see it's about just under a meter high by just over a meter wide. And I'm just going to select those two and then I'm going to extrude inner. So M and W allows me to extrude inner with those windows, okay? And that's gonna give me a nice little frame. Now, depending on the sorts of windows that you want to do, you could just, um, oops, undo um, M and ooh, M and T, you could extrude backwards, and that gives you some you know, sort of depth to those windows, which is fine. If you wanted to say have two sets of sort of glasses in there, what I'd be tempted to do is um, use the knife tool, but use M and L, which is our knife loop. And I'm gonna click in the middle there, and I'm just going to adjust that to about say 75. So it's a bit higher. Yep, that's fine. It's 75% between those, maybe a bit too much. Let's go one third instead, so, or two thirds, 66. And then using those polygons selected, if I go to the extrude, um, 
inner again, M and W. And this time, untick preserve groups. That means that they will no longer extrude inner together and they will extrude inner separately and give me this nice little frame, which I can then M and T to extrude backwards. So there we go, we've got our windows in two separate fashions there, fine by me. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this middle set of polygons and then I'm going to in it extrude those as well. So they are two meters tall by you know, 1.3 meters wide, um, which is okay. So I'm just going to extrude, ooh, don't forget to retick preserve groups. So oop, undo and then preserve groups and just scale that in a bit. So that now makes it sort of 190, so I can, you know, make that exact. And as for width, doors about what, say one meter, I guess. Maybe they're less than that. Maybe they're only about 90 centimeters. Again, you guys are gonna know more about your house than I will. Um, so about 90 centimeters gives me this little door. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to knife that as well. So M and L, sorry, to do the loop. Uh, I'm so used to M and K, which is the old version. And then I'm just going to adjust that to 50%. This is really useful in this new tool to be able to adjust that like that. Okay, that's fine. In an effort to sort of change the way that this is going to look, I'm going to select those and move those down a bit. Okay, and then I'm going to select, oops, select those and move those down a bit too. You'll see where this goes in a minute. Um, and this will allow me to get a door frame. So I'm going to M and L and see if it will allow me. There we go. Okay. What I can do here very quickly is just select those polygons, shift clicking as I go, M and T to extrude to give me some architrave, or if you wanted M and S to get bevel so that that extrudes in a ooh, hello why am I upside down here we go to extrude you know to bevel a little bit and then shrink that so I get a nice edge okay then with these polygons selected I'm going to extrude in it again oh actually I could just go straight for bevel M and S for bevel and again, um, you have the ability of unticking preserve groups. Now, if I was to do it as a whole, it would just bevel that way, okay, which isn't too bad. But if I was to preserve groups and bevel, here we go. We've got a nice sort of wooden paneled door there, really quite fast. So this is used to, you know, just very quickly mock up, okay, something that will, you know, resemble a door. So we've got architrave, we've got door, there's no particular door frame, but it depends how much you are going to sort of look into what it is that you are after for your house. So we've got a pitched roof, but it would be good to, you know, bring that out a bit and maybe get some, you know, maybe soffit some fascias. So again, M and L to, um, knife select there we go and no that's going to give me that's going to work that way so actually what i might do is i'm going to go to my side view and i am going to use my normal knife tool okay now holding down shift i'm just going to select straight across because what shift does it allows me to just you know angle it so you can do different angles 45 degree increments and that should just go straight across although i haven't so there we go. If I untick visible only, this should now go straight across. Press escape 
there we go, Oop. and that should, if I look, go have gone all the way through. Excellent. So, selecting my polygons across the top and the polygons across the back. Oop. Not that one though. I can extrude. Now, M and T will extrude, but what it'll do is it'll, ooh, it will give me a little bit of frontage, which is quite nice to be able to, you know, experiment with, you know, more house stuff, you know, get me roof tiles, give me a sort of like thicker roof here. Give me some maybe soffits and fascias here, which you can experiment and play around with. Maybe I would select those and um, M and W just to shrink. And then I could shrink its height, move it down, M and T, and extrude backwards or extrude forwards, depending if you wanted to be guttering or anything like that. Um, although that does leave that in the way, doesn't it? Really kind of, it's up to you. I mean, that's one way of, you know, quickly modeling a house and you've got a door. You could do a side door if you want and then at the back maybe one nice big lounge window. So that's two and a half meters wide. So just M and W really quickly. And then you could shrink. Or maybe, there we go, something like that. And then you could select those three to M and W a little bit further. M and T back, and then those three, M and W, and I'm just gonna, you know, roughly guess that to make sure it looks okay, M and T back. So these are not accurate models, but you know, if you just want to populate a village or something, and then this one, I'm going to M and W again, and then I'm going to shrink that quite a lot because, hey, maybe it's a downstairs toilet and you only ever want a little window there. M and W, untick preserve groups to give me two M and T back. And quite fast, we've got the idea of a little house and you could create a back door. We could create a porch if we wanted to um, by selecting those polygons out you know, a couple of different things that we could do. It's it's really kind of down to you, but very quickly we have produced a housey looking block, you know, with windows, a front door, windows at the back and a roof. So there are, you know, quite a quick ways of doing this sort of thing. Um, you could create a floor, Ooh, definitely move that down so that it meets the building and a physical sky and you can change its weather and then as you know I like to add ambient occlusion and global illumination I'm going to create a new material and I'm just going to lower its intensity a tad so it's not quite so white Ooh, helps if I'm on the there we go and just drag and drop that to the cube and hit render. Now my colleague has talked about how to you know texture one of these you know really quite fast um, and I've hopefully you know given you a quick idea of how to do a very fast model on something like this you know it didn't take very long at all you know you could keep going and going and going but that's kind of the point um, you know if I get that and that and that and then get the other side. And then just 
mt to extrude out a little bit. You know, you could keep going with realism. You know, you could keep going further and further and further. You could look at what models are available to you to replace stuff like doors. But if this is going to be in the background and you're not really going to sort of look at it too far, then this could be something useful for you at how quickly it was just to knock up a polygon model of a very small bungalow in no time whatsoever. Okay, I hope that was useful for you and I shall see you again in a minute or not, um, depending if you want to carry on looking at how to model a different type of house.